Hello. Just sort of take today to get out on my bike and uh, have a little ride around Canet Chase. I'll show you some of the chase in a minute. But I, I tend to fall in love and fall out of love with Canet Chase. It's right on my doorstep. I'm currently just under three and a half miles into my ride. It was probably about half a mile before I got from my front door to get in onto the chase, Canet Chase. So it's right on my doorstep and that means I ride it a lot. And because I ride it a lot, I don't appreciate how nice it is sometimes. And you tend to fall out of love with places because you tend to go there all the time and you tend to forget what you've got. So then when I fall out of love with Canet Chase, I go off riding in the Peak District and, and other places. And then after a couple of three months, like today, I'll come out for a ride. I'm going to meet a friend of mine in Stafford for a coffee, cycling friend. And I just thought I'd take a, a bike ride over there. So it's about 15 miles there, 15 miles back. Um, and I thought I'd, I'd cycle and I've come across the chase. It's a lovely day, there's no wind. And I've just realized how lucky I am to live in such a gorgeous part of the country within half a mile from my front door. So, hope you enjoy the ride with me. Okay, so that's all the climbing done. We now have about eight mile, virtually downhill. There's a couple of little climbs, but uh, not many. So this is the top. This is the top of Sherbert Valley. So we're riding all the way down Sherbert Valley down to Milford, and at the bottom of Milford. We're going to hit the road and get into Stafford. So I've dropped down off the chase, coming through Walton and uh, dropped onto the canal and I think this is the way I'm going to come back, I'm not sure yet, but uh, this canal uh, heading this way kind of goes towards Stafford and then going back the other way goes all the way to Rugeley and I've got to go to Rugeley to pick up a new rear derailleur from the post office. So uh, I might just jump on the canal and have a steady pace back after my coffee break. <laughs> Thank you. 
this part of the canal I'm heading back now towards Rugeley by the way uh, this part of the canal is quite interesting just around this corner it's going through some land that was privately owned I think it was Tixall Hall so we're, we're near Tixall and uh, back in the day when the canal was being built they wanted to bring the canal through the land and the landowner said oh no you're not coming through my land anyway an agreement was made an agreement was made with the landowner that the canal could come through the land afternoon on the understanding that the land sorry that the canal didn't look like a canal and that's why this part of the canal is so wide and I do believe now let me just remove my camera here so through the trees there you might not be able to see it I might get a better picture of it that's the old gatehouse for the for the hall the hall is over there somewhere I think it's gone now but this part of the canal was made wider to look like a lake so from the hall it didn't look like a canal and so the canal that was positioned here is really wide and it's now created a natural natural duck area nice and wide and obviously it's a nice spot for narrowboats to stop now because uh, it gives the impression of being not so much on the canal oh and this there's a lovely lovely narrowboat down here I passed this before and uh, always thought it looked nice it's not not these ones hello doggy these ones are nice this one down here just past this red one try and get a nice shot of it it's all it's made out of teak or something nice hard wood and I just think if I was to own a narrow boat or a boat it would be one like that looks rather nice doesn't it anyway back on with my canal return back to Rugeley let's listen to some music as we go nice bit of reggae I think here we go Thank you. 